everybody. I'm glad you could join me today. And what I want to show you is how to braise a chicken with some mushrooms. First, we're going to use an air chilled chicken, but with mushrooms and a little bit of shallot or garlic and this wonderful mushroom powder slash extract that I found. So in thinking of that, I put a little bit of this powder into the sauce. I thought, oh, I think I also want to share with you some things that I found when our little issue of the virus set in, as I have a really, oh, marginal immune system, shall we say, and I really don't like drugs. I'd rather be eating food that's of a benefit to my immune system and boost it as best we can. Having said that, I take vitamin C 6,000 a day, two in the morning, 2,000 at lunch, and 2,000 at dinner. You can't get in too much trouble with vitamin C. But then in doing the homework, like, you know, how do we stay out of trouble, if possible, with the coronavirus that's going around? So I was able to find some stuff. Elderberry, oh my gosh, this stuff is so good. Elderberry extract. These are, I bought two. I bought the extract and we bought the gummies. The gummies, you can eat these like candy. If you're not familiar with elderberry, it sort of tastes like Concord grape juice, kind of. I mean, it's they're just really good. I could see myself getting in trouble with those. And then we bought some extract. My sister and I went in together, so we're pat, we're, we're making a stash of, in our arsenal so we don't have to leave the house. And we bought these a couple weeks ago. If you go looking for this stuff now, kind of want to grab it because supplies are running thin and delivery times are being much more extended than pre-virus state. Anyway, this black elderberry extract is great. It's a teaspoon a day. Put it on yogurt, put it in cottage cheese. There's just so, oh my God, so much you can do with it. Um, Put it over ice cream, but it is just a teaspoon. Anyway, some of the benefits, now I'm going to read this because there's just, it's just so packed with great stuff that, I, you know, I can't remember it all. But the elderberry is more antioxidants than you know what to do with, relieves colds, fights the flu, it boosts your immune system. Good for HIV and AIDS, you know, if that's of benefit to anybody. Sinus issues, back and leg pain, nerve pain, chronic fatigue, dental pain. It's also good in cooking, too, as far as using for juice, jams, jellies, chutneys, and then elderberry wine. High in vitamin C, fiber, um... Oh, it just goes on and on, but it's a great antioxidant as well as a great anti-inflammatory. So everything about this is sounding really good. I'm going to grow some this year. I've, I'm on a mission to find two, because it takes two, not just one, elderberry plants. And it'll probably take a few years, but gardening is always about next year. So having said that, elderberry. And also, elderberry could be good for your heart. Uh, it's good for reducing cholesterol, uric acid, blood sugar, sugar levels, and of course, further research is needed, you know, but they can't say anything. Helps fight cancer, fights harmful bacteria, may support the immune system, could protect against UV radiation, may increase urination, which is good to get rid of excess salt in your body, because that would lead to heart attacks and stuff, and may have some antidepressant properties. So with something that tastes good and it's natural, why not give it a whirl? I am, and so is Sydney. Quite a few people I know actually are. So then, after that, I found this stuff called um, C60. Someone else had suggested it. So I looked up this C60. What's that? I'd never heard of it. C60, find it on Amazon, maybe. It 
protects against aging by preventing damage to free radicals, has been shown to improve the lifespan of rats. Well, hey, I'll give it a whirl. It's extra virgin olive oil in there. C60 can kill viruses. That's kind of convenient. Prevents osteoarthritis and bone inflammation. Eliminates bacteria. Stops sunburn for younger looking skin. And again, pre prevents inflammation. So, everything looks good about that. And this is take a teaspoon daily. So isn't that great? Of course we have the Theraflu and Tylenol, you know, anything just to stay out of, hopefully stay out of any kind of hospital setting whatsoever. But then, also what was suggested is this stuff by Fresh Cap. It's called Thrive, a blend of six powerful mushroom extracts. And the mushrooms are Thrive is a blend of six incredible mushrooms. Lion's Mane for focus, mental clarity, and creativity. Cordyceps, I might not be saying this right, but correct me when I, you know, you can send me, you can send me an audio of how I should be pronouncing it. Uh, Cordyceps for energy, endurance, and athletical performance. Chahaga for detoxifying and inner health. Rishi, the mushroom of immortality. Turkey tail for the ultimate immune support. And maitake, mataki for bolstering the immune system. Well, I'll tell you what, this stuff's great. It's a 60 gram bag, which is 61 gram servings. Um, Sydney is putting it in her coffee. It would be wonderful with boiling water to make like a mushroom broth or saute some mushrooms, add water and a teaspoon of this. Well, it's not even a teaspoon. It's, they give you in this bag a small little measuring cup and that is a gram. Doesn't take much. Very potent. Tastes like a porcini mushroom, which is a very flavorful, intense mushroom. I just love the stuff. So what I did with it is, in this chicken video that we're about to watch, is put it into the sauce when, after the chicken was out of the oven, and it dissolved with the cream and it added just a really intense wonderful flavor i also made a pasta with it and the pasta i did was mushrooms peas some scallions a little bit of cream and some sherry because mushrooms and sherry kind of go hand in hand anyway this stuff's really good so i would highly suggest that you take a look at this you can find links to all this stuff on my amazon store and if you would, purchase through there because Amazon and both YouTube send me little pennies from heaven, which then helps me keep the lights on. And it also gives me a couple extra bucks to go buy stuff, whatever it is, for the next video. So I do hope you try it because it's really good. And I think you'll enjoy it as much as I do. So now I'm going to teach you how to do this chicken dish. It's simple. It holds well. Uh, you can make it a day in advance. Keeps for a week in the refrigerator for sure. And I'll tell you all about that. Enjoy it. And leave comments for me. But subscribe so that you get subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get updates because I will be posting pretty frequent I would say going going to add some outdoor stuff to my garden hopefully the woodchucks stay out of it and just really good all-around information that I can share with you okay on with the how-to let's start with the whole chicken I picked up some whole chickens because it's a great way to go. I really like cooking these chickens with the bone in. Gives a lot of flavor. And I'm going to teach you how to cut it up on your own. 
Now, this is an air chilled chicken because I am so in love with the air chilled chicken. I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go. But you'll notice that in this pack, in this chicken pack, there's not much retained water weight in here. That's because they don't go into the big pool to have any retained water whatsoever. At the time I'm making this video, it seems that shelves are bare. This, these are from Costco. Meyer has air chilled chicken. I was out at my little grocer here in Waterville. They didn't have a chicken to be found. At this time and space with our country crisis, you might pick up a couple packs, one for now or later, and one for the freezer. All right, the chicken. I drained him. I gave him a quick rinse. I gave him a little minor pat down. Now to cut the chicken pieces up. I'm going to cut this eight to one. And that means eight pieces to the whole chicken. And how I'm going to do this is... The legs we're going to cut and the thighs off and then cut the breast in half. And I might cut the wings out. This is a little bit bigger than I normally buy, but I bought the last package, so no choice. Now, where do you cut so you can go through the bone easily? If you look at the chicken leg where it meets the thigh, you'll see a line of fat that runs through. You can see it run all the way around. But take the knife and run it along that line of fat and it will lead you right down to the bone where you just cut it off and voila you have a chicken leg now let's do the same with the other side I'm gonna turn this around so it's a little bit closer to me but see where the line of fat is that bone should be or where it meets the thigh should be right there and you know what I stuck the tip in and there it is so if you cut straight through that you can see it as I open it up where you can cut right through that relatively easy I like to take the wing tips off if you're going to make chicken stock you can make that save this for the chicken stock okay so now what you're going to do is we're going to cut right down through the breast and you can see the middle breast bone so just take the point of the knife and cut through turn it around so it faces you I'm doing this the paper sticking to it but it saves a mess on the counter and then cut that through open it up cut all the way down through the breast bone and then what you want to do is oh look I should have looked first most of the time the chickens don't come with the livers this one did so I'll save those well that was an awfully nice of them we'll put those aside and I'll freeze them now I want to cut the backbone out so I'm gonna go right along the inner part of the backbone and I think what I'll do is turn it over on this side and cut through. You can see on the back, it's pretty fatty right along the backbone. So if you put the knife in right where the darker skin meets the lighter skin, chances are you'll be following the backbone right through. You can see now where the breast meets the thigh and if you look at the darker skin here from the lighter skin of the breast that should just cut right through for you I think I am going to cut these down a little bit because they're so big normally these air chill chickens are smaller but Costco might be setting standards that they want them a little bigger so I think I'm going to cut this on an angle so it looks halfway decent and then that makes a nice little piece see where that's going and I think we'll now we can tuck that under I like to buy three three and a half pound chickens because I think they're just a little smaller a little more flavorful but in our current 
crisis. I think you sort of have to take what you can get, but I only buy air chill, that's for sure. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. We are going to salt and fresh cracked pepper the chicken. I go pretty heavy because I'm gonna toss this all up to get it coated on both sides. Salt, enough for all of it. I'm gonna take a little bit more. Then, toss it up so that it covers on both sides. Love the smell of fresh cracked pepper. If you don't have a pepper mill, you really wanna get one. But a pepper mill sometimes is one of those things that you need to get the pepper mill and hopefully it has some cracked pepper in it so that you can, or some whole peppercorns, so that you can grind it yourself and see what kind of a grind you get. Well, I have the pan over a medium, medium high heat and I put the oil in just before I'm ready to use it. If you put it in too early and you forget about it, it could catch fire and that is so not a good combination. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to it because the butter adds for the browning. You need the oil so that the butter doesn't burn, but you want a little bit of the butter to aid in browning. I'm dusting this with a little bit of flour. I don't really have to dredge this in flour because all I want this to do is slightly thicken. We're gonna make a slight pan and cream sauce. After the butter subsides from sizzling, then we'll put the chicken pieces in, skin down so that they start to brown. And you'll find when you start putting this chicken in, you might have to turn the heat up a little bit because this chicken is stone cold out of the refrigerator and it will drop the temperature of the oil pretty quick. <laughs> so I don't want to crowd this pan too much. There's a couple pieces that I'll hold back until these get browned on both sides and then I'll brown these. While I'm waiting for the chicken pieces to brown, I have a small shallot shallot and I also have one small garlic clove. So I'm going to slice these up. And I'm going to slice the garlic clove too. Well, actually, you know what? I want to show you the garlic press. I love my garlic press. This garlic press is just a wonderful piece. I've got arthritis so bad in my hands as a xylus, but my hands fit it really nice so you can get a nice firm pressure on it to press it. And all you do is put the clove in there, put it together, squeeze it, cut the garlic off, and you've got a nice little fast garlic paste. For this garlic press, I, the reason I like this one so much is because it comes with this cleaner that all you have to do is run some water through the back, put this, all the little, put all the little prongs through the holes, and it pops the remainder of the skin out. All right, let's see what's going on with the chicken. Oh, this is nice. It's starting to brown nicely. I want to brown these first because I want the flavor from the browning of the skin. And yeah, this is looking marvelous. Just marvelous. That one's not quite ready yet. Here's the first piece I put in. We'll brown the bottom too. But it comes off the bottom of the pan when it's browned properly. But see how nice that looks? So we'll just let that go for a little bit. Okay, what are the rest of these doing? Oh, that looks good. That's browned enough on the bottom. After the garlic and the shallot, slice your mushrooms. No special knife skills. I'm sliding, slicing them quarter of an eighth, eighth inch thick. You could quarter them too. Makes no difference. Whatever's easy. Now what I want to do, there's all sorts of wonderful little brown bits. I'm going to leave the back in there. Like I say, that's the cook thing. But I'm going to put the mushrooms in. I want to start these browning before I put the shallot and the garlic in because these act like sponges. I'm not draining off all that fat because I need this to saute the mushrooms in 
so that they get a nice flavor and color without having to add any more fat to this. I'm going to put in a little bit of smoked paprika. This stuff is really wonderful. It's a Spanish smoked paprika. You don't have to do this, but I happen to have it. I'm using in-stock stuff. Let's get, let's get creative here if you can't go out of the house for a while. This happens to be in my cupboard, and it's in a tin, so it keeps well, keeps the light out, and it really adds a nice flavor. You can't add a lot of this. I'll put a link to this. You can get this on Amazon. I'm not sure how easy it is to find. I have seen it at a couple of the local stores, but it can be pricey. I'll put a link to Amazon up. Okay, now we'll put in the garlic and the shallot. We're going to soften the shallot and the garlic ever so slightly. I'm going to splash this with a little white wine. And we're going to deglaze and scrape up all those brown bits in the bottom because this is going to make such a great sauce. What I'll do is add some chicken stock and probably a touch of heavy cream once it comes out of the oven and the chicken's cooked, but I want the chicken to pick up some of this flavor in the bottom. Now, if you don't happen to have shallot, you could put onions in here, no problem with that. Now let's layer the chicken in. We're going to put, the legs and the thighs take longer to cook, so I'm going to layer these in the bottom. Now what you want to do to get a nice fit in the pan, I have one bone going this way, then the top of the leg going this way so it fits nicely put a thigh, both thighs in the bottom, breast with the wing attached to it in the bottom, and I have two more pieces, so I'm going to pick this back up a little bit, and I can put this breast, one breast, down in that corner, and I can stand this up just slightly, move that over just slightly, and this other breast will fit. This is a little tight, but hey, it's what I've got. I'm not going to buy a new pan for the project, so we're going to make it work. Okay, all the chicken pieces are in there. Before I put the lid on, I'm going to sprinkle just a tiny, tiny bit of this smoked paprika over the top of the chicken. It's probably no more than a quarter teaspoon. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is put these chicken livers in. You know, you don't want to waste anything. And then what we'll do is put the lid on and we're going to turn the heat off this and it's going to go to the oven for about an hour and probably 15 minutes in a 350 degree preheated oven. Oh, let's finish the chicken. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? So here's what I'm going to do with the chicken. To make the sauce, we want to take the chicken out. Oh, look at all these wonderful juices in the bottom of this pot. Oh, this is going to be really good. And we'll put this onto a warm servings piece, especially if you're going to eat it right away. If not, it won't make that much difference. Come on, baby, out you go. All right, I want to take the back out, and I want to take the little chicken livers out. Those are cooked nicely, but they're going to have nothing to do with the sauce. All right, now that this base of the sauce has come up to a boil, I can turn this down a little bit, and what I want to do is put in this wonderful magic mushroom powder. All right, so let's face it. We have to start beefing up the immune system. No two ways about it. I personally am taking boatloads of vitamin C. 2,000 milligram in the morning, vitamin C's, two at lunch and two at dinner. So I read about this mushroom powder. You take a gram a day, which is a small scoop of it, and it helps boost the immune system but I thought this would be a great flavor enhancer 
to the sauce I'm making. Now I could put a little wine, I could put a little sherry, I could put a little marsala in it, but I've already got the white wine, so I'm gonna leave that alone. We've already got the mushrooms, and I really want this to be a base of a mushroom flavor. So what I'm going to do very simply is add a touch of heavy cream to this, doesn't take a lot, and stir this in. And if I had enough chive, fresh chives in the garden, I would add a little bit of chives. Chives and mushroom are a perfect combination. Or a little bit of fresh thyme, but it's a little too early for both of them. And having said that, I think this will be good on its own. I do have some chopped green onion that we'll gild the lily with. I want, now that the cream is in there, I want this to reduce just ever so slightly. And you can see how the bubbles now are turning into a nice slow bubble. But, and it coats the back of a spoon just perfect. And how do you know when it's done? You'll know when it's done when it comes together and it looks like a nice sauce. Thin, like, like a heavy cream sauce. Oh my, that's really good. I'm not going to serve this. My sister's going to come out tomorrow, and I think we're going to have this for lunch. So what I'm going to do is put this sauce on the side of the chicken, and then tomorrow when I reheat it, I'll put this in the oven covered, and we'll put the sauce uh, over the chicken at that time. Now, doesn't that look good? It reheats beautifully. I hope you give it a try. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new videos that I'll be updating frequently. And if you would, to help me keep the lights on. And also, again, uh, with my little pennies from heaven, if you find anything that you might find of interest, follow the link to my Amazon store. And if you buy from there, they pay me a little bit so I can shop for the next video. So hope to see you again, and thanks so much for watching.